And this work was culminated to the announcement in year 2008 that 15,000, or actually close to 16,000 human genes, uh, uh, gateway entry clones, have become available. And all those proteins were synthesized in the region system and, uh, uh, and, and, and salt refraction yield all reported. And this was, this was announced by the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, AIST, in Japan. And if you're interested in that, uh, please do contact them. Those entry, in, uh, entry clones are all available to the public. This is another way, another way to look at, uh, look at the, uh, the expression. Some proteins, even if we express it, may may not be active. So this is one uh, experiment or test, series of tests, to see whether the human protein kinases expressed in the wheat germ and how their activity was. And of course, you can, you can check the different method to check different type of activity uh, for that kinases, one is autophosphorylation, otherwise than using histone and the MVP. And in this case, the expression rate was also uh, the 80 percent, very, very respectable number. And when you look at the activity histone case, it was high, but in a different activity area, they were not necessary. So, however, this is just one effort to see how the expression rate is related activity itself. And this, is, this is also an ex excerpt from current opinion in biotechnology to 2006 and uh, this shows all the different activity, uh, different uh, the genes and the different species and how those activities uh, uh, were when they were expressed in the Wheaton system. Now uh, I can briefly uh, make an introduction to robotic protein synthesizer to Dr. Sato's presentation. The, the important thing is robot is not the enabler of the expression. The enabler of the expression is the wheat germ cell free system by itself. But uh, we have developed for the, the machine so that protein synthesis itself becomes your part of routine activity. And your precious time as a researcher will be spent study protein, not make protein. So how to make protein as a routine activity is a whole purpose to, pro to, to, to develop all these robots. And the first robot we, we, we uh, designed and produced was called Gen Decoder. It was, uh, it was for high throughput screening. And it, it, it can uh, screen up to 384 samples means 496 well plate samples. And they use a bilayer method because it's, it's, it's relatively easy to robotize the bilayer method. And it could, uh, it could screen three, up to 384 84 samples. The next stage was, well, after you screen of those proteins, you want to produce them. So for produced proteins, we developed a large robot called a proteinus for mass production. It, it, could, it can produce up to eight samples. And they use a repeat batch method. Again, we use a centrifuge to remove byproduct uh, and, 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 a, and a certain interval, programmed interval, and you add a transition buffer to continue the reaction until you get 4 to 32 milligrams of crude protein. Now you are coming to the, the, the milligram range which is necessary for either exocrystallography or NMR analysis. But then, instead of uh, keeping all these big robots, we combine two functions together in this smaller unit, more uh, uh, and easy to maneuver. So this is a very versatile desktop uh, pro uh, protein synthesizer. We call it Proteinus DT2. And it can be operated either uh, with 24 samples or six samples. And if you want to express six samples, you can do transcription, translation, purification, all in one campaign. So once you put your reagents, your, your, your uh, uh, DNA templates, put the cover down, 
and you let the machine run, the next day you harvest your protein. That's what the machine is for. They also use bilayer method, and uh, in the screening mode, that means 24 sample mode, you can screen up to 0.1 milligram per sample, and the crude production can go up to from 0.5 to 3 milligram. Okay. Then the last uh, machine, which is a very, very, rather small machine, we call it Protemist XE. It's a desktop mass production. It produces only one sample compared to Protemist, which can uh, produce eight samples. This machine only produces one sample day and day and night, and up to 48 hours or longer. And the method we use is called the fuel time feed method. It is VivaFlow, it's an off-the-shelf item available from Sartorius. And using this uh, VivaFlow filter, we filter out the, uh, the byproducts and constantly replenish the transition buffer and messenger RNA. Then with this machine, this tiny machine, we can pr produce crude from 20 to all the way to like a 400 milligrams. And now, if you use larger filters, you can multiply this number by two or three. So now, now on a crude basis, of course, some proteins are more difficult to explain, but it, it is relatively easy protein. You can produce close to gram order of protein. And this is a, this is a uh, protein is a DT2, and I will not go into details because uh, Dr. Sato will explain to you all these functions. But one thing, uh, we integrated here is this model is specifically uh, for uh, overseas market. And the important things to sell a machine like this in overseas is the main, it should be almost maintenance free. And the machine itself has been almost maintenance free. That's one aspect. And the second aspect is we can, uh, we can vary the temperature of transition and purification between 4 and 37 degrees C. Now, for example, if you're looking at something like proteases, which is, which is eat by, which destroy by, by themselves, and it, 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 if you're going to produce them, you can really reduce the temperature. Al although the reaction time gets longer, at least you can produce them at a very low temperature. So this, this temperature range uh, is, is, contributes to, to that type of protein. And when you look at high protein protein and the functional analysis, this is one platform uh, which you can build. For example, this gen decoder, which can screen up to 384 proteins per day, can be, uh, can be combined with a large cDNA library and 384 genes are expressed here on the screen to see whether they are functional or not. And then this information, the feedback, the another batch of CDN, uh, CDNAs are pulled into this machine, produce another protein, goes round and round. But each step, at each step, each campaign is a matter of day, and the number is close to 400 genes. So your high throughput uh, effort can be drastically facilitated by, by using the region system. That machine, this uh, gen decoder is a large machine. So currently, we are thinking this way. Well, instead of asking the big machine to do everything for you, if you have a very skillful, stable hand, you might as well help a generic machine instead of having over-designed machines, and you, you help the machine to carry the plates quietly back and forth, but you, you, and you combine the, uh, the standard liquid dispenser according to what you want to do, and you just do the protocol together with the machine, and you can achieve the same goal. And this is a protomist XE sitting right there without saying anything. Okay. And this is this is a, this is how machine works. You have messenger RNA submix, which is which are replenished on a, on a constant programmed interval. Then this beautiful machine takes out the byproduct, it, 
and the messenger RNA server mix are replenished either every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes. 